Hello and welcome to another Daily Dose of English. Today's Daily Dose is in response to a video request from Christophe in France. Ladies and gentlemen, can I hear a big hand for Christophe in France? Hello, Chab. My name is Christophe and I live in France. Thank you for this very innovative way of teaching English. Richard, could you tell us more about Cockney? A few years ago I went to London and British fans taught me some very funny Cockney expression. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christophe. Before I start, I should point out that I'm not a Cockney. Cockney is a term used to define a geographic area known as the East End of London. Linguistically, that is from a language point of view, it refers to the type of English spoken by the people who live in the East End. Although the term Cockney was first recorded in a poem in 1362, the vision of William concerning Piers Plowman by William Langland, its present meaning was first used in 1617. The present meaning describes anyone born within the sound of the bells of St. Mary Le Beau Church. Due to the area over which the sound of the bow bells could be heard historically, all East Enders are Cockneys, but not all Cockneys are East Enders. The linguistic features of Cockney include the greater than average use of the glottal stop, the use of double negatives, and the vocalization of the dark L. But the thing that most people, like Christoph, associate with Cockney is their rhyming slang. During this Daily Dose of English, any Cockney accent that I manage to reproduce will necessarily be false. This attempt to mimic a Cockney accent by those who are not true Cockneys is sometimes called Mockney. Even though I used to work at Guy's Hospital in London, and this hospital is in the area understood to be covered by the sound of the Bow Bells, my attempts at Cockney will be a bit pony to say the least. Pony and trap, trap, crap. Nevertheless, let's take a butcher's at some examples of Cockney rhyming slang. Normally, rhyming slang is created by the replacement of a common word or phrase with two or three other words that rhyme with the original. The original word is normally left out, and the origin of the rhyming slang becomes obscure. Sometimes the original word can be completely obscured over time. Take the slang term aris, for example. This means bottom or arse. Why? Because arse became bottle and glass, which became the slang term bottle. Or, in Cockney terms, bottle. Bottle was then rhymed with Aristotle, which became aris. Some words have made it into mainstream English. Take the word Burke, for instance. The OED defines it as a fool. He's a right Burke. People use this common expression every day without any idea that it originated from the name of a famous fox hunt, the Barclay Hunt. Barclay Hunt, hunt. Hunt is a rhyming slang for a word that is altogether more offensive and one which I can't imagine anyone would use in public. Would you Adam and Eve it? Eve, believe, believe it. I ain't heard a dicky bird. Dicky bird, bird, word. Come on, use your loaf. Loaf of bread, bread, head. The trouble's been rabbiting on all night on the bone. Trouble and strife, strife. Wife, rabbit and pork, pork, talk, dog and bone, bone, phone. He's telling porkies, porkies, pork pies, pies, lies. Let's have a butcher's, butcher's hook, hook, look. She's got long bacons, bacon and eggs, eggs, legs. He's brown bread. Brown bread, bread, 
dead. He plates are killing me. Plates of meat, meat, feet. I need to get myself a new whistle. Whistle and flute, flute, suit. How much for the nanny? Nanny goat, goat, coat. She's just had her barnet fixed. Barnet fair, fair, hair. It's cold out. Put on your daisies. Daisy roots. Roots. Boots. I'm off down the frog. To the battle. Frog and toad. Toad. Road. Battle cruiser. Cruiser. Boozer. Off license. I hope you enjoyed this daily dose of English. Baked potato. Baked potato. Potato. Later. See you later.